in junior schools, <clears throat> high schools, colleges and universities all across the world, they still teach children and young adults that gravity is a force of attraction between masses. Why? A lot of people have asked this question of why are they still teaching people that gravity is a force of attraction between masses when that description was replaced by Einstein over 100 years ago. That is a pretty easy question to answer because when I learned about Einstein's equations and theory of relativity, I had the same question. I asked my teachers, why do you teach us that when it's technically not true anymore? And the answer is easy. Try to explain to children how an object that has a mass can bend space and time. You know, it's such a hard concept to grasp, even for adults, even for many, many academics. It's such a weird concept. How on earth would you describe it to children? But at least in the school I went to, they told us this is Newton's theory of relativity, but technically Einstein is more correct. They told us, but they said, Hey, for our context, those equations were perfectly fine. When you want to learn this, you can learn it after school. That's basically it. Why would we tell children about this space-time bending weird thing that no one can grasp without years of training when we could teach them the easy way that is also correct in our context. Oh dear Jesse. We're going to need an equivalence principle for you to understand how it's wrong to teach children false facts in the name of science or easy education just because it might be a little bit complicated. We all know and understand that cars are an everyday part of life. We all know and understand that for an accelerating mass to occur, there must be a force. And we can describe that with Newton's first and second laws of motion. And you know what? We can even calculate it. But no one disputes the difficulties and the complexities associated with explaining what it is that makes the engines inside the cars work. It isn't easy to explain to children of any age in high school that the, in the basic components of an internal combustion engine require a crankshaft, a conrod, a piston, and that when the, con the crankshaft spins round, it sucks and squashes and sucks and squashes air, and the valves at the top of the engine allow air in and then allow exhaust out and that there's things called uh, injectors that inject fuel into the uh, the combustion chamber. And if you mix these things all together in the right hodgepodge, you can create a suck, squash, bang, blow example, where you then get propulsion at the crankshaft, which you can then feed into a gearbox and then produce propulsion. Nobody disputes the difficulties in explaining that. I mean, identifying the names alone is difficult. You probably couldn't do it yourself. Perhaps you could. Maybe you'll impress us. But... All the engines require a delicate balance of the right amount of air, the right amount of fuel, the right amount of compression, and the right amount of explosion for them to run properly. Now, you can do it badly, and you can do it properly, and you could go into explaining all this, and that's what technical college is for, or perhaps engineering college, or whatever equivalent that you want to talk about in your environment. But let there be no doubt the internal combustion engine and how it works is too complicated for children in primary school and probably in secondary school too. So what should we do instead, Jesse? Shall we tell them a completely false narrative because it's convenient? Should, I know, let's tell them that there are little green men under the bonnet and those little green men are all harnessed in and they create the propulsion by running and we've got to feed them on, on little green men food and give them water, little green men water every now and again because if we don't, they'll run out of food or water and they'll die. It's completely and utterly false, isn't it? But it would explain where the force comes from and children could imagine that and it would make sense to them because they're at that age where they believe any bullshit that you tell them. Or alternatively, we could say to them that the internal combustion engine requires a certain amount of knowledge and understanding. It's a little bit too complex for you at this age. But if you accept that there needs to be a force there to propel the vehicle and, and understand that there's an engine under there, if you want to learn more about the engine, in this case gravity, you can go on and learn about it. But the 
Fundamental difference between gravity and the internal combustion engine is that the internal combustion engine is not it's not contentious. People understand it. And even if you don't understand it, it's not a contentious fact to learn it. The same can't be said for gravity, though, can it? Let's go back to the issue. Should children be taught that gravity is a force when it's, it's equivalently the same as saying little green men are underneath the bonnet? Or should they be told that it's a very, very, very contentious matter and we believe that we're teaching you the correct stuff, but it is contentious, there is an argument over it, and if you want to learn more, go into the real world and learn about it. But for the purposes of passing your exams, we're going to teach you the model that we want you to understand. But it doesn't make it true. It's just to pass your exams. That's what children should be taught. They should be told that there is an alternative explanation that is contentious, that isn't agreed upon by all of science, and even if they don't accept it, at least they are aware that there is a contentious issue and that they can learn more and it doesn't stop in just that classroom learning about Newton. That's what should happen in the classroom. We should all have been told. We should not all have been told that little green men run underneath the bonnets of cars and that's the force. Because I got to 36 when I realised that cars were not propelled by little green men under the bonnet. And that's the same as being as finding out that gravity's not a force at the age of 36, Jesse. I was deceived. So were you. And so was everybody else. Why?